What's a computer? Nope. A computer. A computer? Nope. Computer that's not a computer. Okay, fine. For some people, a computer is a device that you can use to make apps for that computer. And for most of its existence, that's just counted the iPad out almost completely, at least until last year. Swift Playgrounds is a great way to learn to code. This year, we're taking it even further. You can now build apps for iPhone and iPad on iPad. When I was trying this new version of the Swift Playgrounds, I made myself a challenge. That's Pedro Kasiki, professor at McKenzie Presbyterian University. So I developed this app called Azulejo in one weekend. But what's that like exactly, especially compared to the relatively infinite power and flexibility of Xcode on the Mac? On the Swift Playgrounds, it's all very simple and accessible. So we don't have all that noise that other features Xcode, for example, can bring to us. It kind of make me uh, think more on my code and more on what, on what I was developing. I was just sitting on, in front of my iPad and trying to create something. A lot of this might just seem beyond obvious. Hell, Xcode on the iPad might seem beyond obvious, and we'll get to more on that in a minute. But it's only really obvious if you see the iPad as more of a traditional computing device, not the computing appliance, that Apple had in mind for it originally, like getting an Xbox instead of a Windows PC. We are trying to find something that can be accessible to everyone. And then when Apple launched this, this program, everyone can code and develop with, with Swift. This is good because we are trying to make uh, it possible for everyone. But here's the thing. If you can make videos on the iPad with iMovie or LumaFusion and put them up on YouTube, and audio with GarageBand or Ferrite and get them up on Apple Podcasts. Why couldn't you? Why shouldn't you be able to also make apps? It flows naturally now because when we are starting to learn how to code, especially using Everyone Can Code, for example, we are using the Swift Playgrounds uh, with the Playground books, which are those uh, uh, books, amazing books that Apple have created to uh, learn the, the, the computer fundamentals. Uh, but we are doing something very limited. We are just learning how to code the fundamentals. But then when we have now the opportunity to create an app and build it and send it to the App Store right on the iPad, for example, there's no barrier anymore. And now this month, they're also adding that ability to Swift Playgrounds for the Mac, which alongside a bunch of other updates now lets you build Mac apps using Swift UI. Apple's modern declarative interface toolkit, and yeah, real honest to Craig Mac apps. It's very empowering because some of them are struggling with finances, struggling with some personal issues, and they are trying to, 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 to get better every day. So when they are on the first year of, of college, for example, they already have two or three apps on the App Store. So they now can monetize it, they can share their thoughts, and it's very empowering. And it brings coding truly finally up to parity with video and audio production across Apple's ecosystem. Because now, just like you can get started directly manipulating your video or audio in iMovie or GarageBand on the iPad, and then move over to the admittedly less tactile, but far more workhorse environment of iMovie or GarageBand on the Mac, and then pretty much graduate in a straight line all the way up to the far closer to limitless potential of a Final Cut Pro or Logic Pro, now you can do the exact same thing from Swift Playgrounds on the iPad and then go back and forth to Swift Playgrounds on the Mac, but then also graduate all the way up to Xcode. We can start coding on the iPad and then finish on the Mac and vice versa. So uh, seems like it's natural. We are working in a simple environment. And then when we start creating something bigger, something that needs more features, we can go to the Xcode. So will Apple one day go the other direction and provide full-on parity, give us Xcode for iPad and Final Cut and Logic Pro while they're at it as well? I don't think that's gonna happen, but I think that would be very great. It's a, a dream of every iOS developer. It will be having all the features from Xcode on our iPad. It means mobility, it means accessibility. Uh, I believe the iPad have a lot of power with the new chips. 
So I think that could be something, but I, I really don't believe that we're going to happen soon. What I'd personally love to see is some kind of peer-to-peer -peer or even online functionality where you can work on the same project on your iPad or Mac, depending on what you're doing, when and where you're doing it, like directly manipulate some stuff on the couch and then go back and slog through even more stuff at your desk. And the devices don't really matter that much. They're just opportunistic endpoints for the way you want to work in that moment. But we're definitely a ways away from that still. But at least until then, I get to be informed and entertained by the best newsletter ever. It makes starting my day so much better than doom scrolling Twitter and me just so much smarter. It's morning brew and it has everything I really need to read each day, every day in just five minutes and for absolutely free. It arrives perfectly timed, ready to read right when I wake up and it's impeccably curated with only the most important news and views in this snappy, informative, relevant, but sometimes completely irreverent style. And yeah, 100% completely free. Seven days a week, Monday through Sunday. Just click the link in the description and get your daily stocks and crypto highlights and stories like today, where I learned why all the billionaires might need to start flying commercial and what it looks like at the center of the galaxy. It's morning brew, it's free, it takes all of 15 seconds to subscribe, and it starts your day off smart. Just hit the button on the screen or click the link in the description, and you'll not only get a free newsletter you'll actually read, but one you'll consistently enjoy. Clicking on that link really helps out the channel, and so does hitting up this video to learn all about Apple's struggle to figure out if the iPad should be, could be, would be a computer, and what it really means for all of us. Just hit up that video, and I'll see you there.